Hello everybody, it's me, <coughs> Dr. Dirtak, and in this video I will show you something really extra dirty. But Budrich has asked me to make a little disclaimer before we start the video to make you fully understand that this is so dirty that it's not recommended. Try to find other solutions than using this dirt hack. But it is a dirt hack, sometimes it is what gets the job done. And I'm talking about sending fake input with X2 tool. And I thought uh, this video you will not get any dot files, you will not get any uh, files. I will just show you an, a use case where I use this. And then you can read uh, X2 tool man page to find out more how this works. Uh, but let's, uh, let's uh, just start here. This is my Vivaldi window. When it starts, it looks like this. Stupid BIOS start page I, I thought was funny once upon a time. Not that much anymore, but I just don't. I've gotten around changing it. Uh, I have also applied a bunch of uh, other um, start, uh, hacks to this or dirt hacks. Like uh, I'm using a status bar, I have moved the extension uh, buttons into this status bar here. So um, th th this is not default Vivaldi at all, I also use this vertical tab bar and so on. Um, the extension, my favorite extension uh, for Vivaldi is CVim, which adds like a, a Vim layer for Vivaldi. There are other alternatives to this, one that's good for, for Firefox is uh, Tridactyl. Uh, the best one is Pentadactyl, but that's, I think it only works on Pale Moon now. Uh, and then there are like Vimperator and stuff, they all work quite similar. You, you, you can use your keyboard to, to browse the web basically. One uh, thing is that you can press a key and that, then you get hints. You see here, here's a D, here's an S, here's an F. If I press D here, that would be the same as clicking this link here. That's really useful. Another uh, thing is that you can press O to bring up this open command and then you can uh, from here uh, browse your uh, bookmarks or search or change tab and, and stuff from this menu. That's nice, something I use all the time. And another uh, thing is that all, all of these uh, extensions ha have I think is quick marks. You can uh, type G O and then another character for instance g that takes me directly to to my github so it's a really fast way to to go to your favorite uh, uh, favorite bookmark so to speak all of this nice cool i like it but check this out now if i close vivaldi here and start vivaldi the, like a normal person starts vivaldi uh, from the command line, Vivaldi stable. <coughs> this will bring up a window. It opens it here, and now uh, th that window have focus now. The Vivaldi window has focus, but if I press O to bring up the open menu, nothing happens. I have no idea where this O is going now, really. But I discovered that I needed to also click the window, and now I can press O. There we got the menu, now it works. But my uh, uh, quick marks doesn't work. When I press G O G here, we can see error marks not set. It, it told me really quickly there, I can do it again. Mark not set. Discovered I needed to, for some reason, reload Vivaldi with an F5 and now G O G works. And also, of course, move it to the C container, renaming the window class and stuff like that. These other things I do here in Sublime here, I have opened this uh, uh, because I have a script that uh, starts Vivaldi for me. Moves it to the right window, it also starts uh, this uh, CVIM server thing here. Let's not get into that. This, this video is not about Vivaldi, I will not show you anything about that really. Just how I use X2 tool here to, to make, make all of this work. Because, yeah, and we should also change these to, let's do 50-50. Like this, um, because I can start uh, Vivaldi with this browser script that I have. 
instead that will apply all this and, and that will start the window, move it to the C container, rename the class and then it will also send here with extra tool it will send a mouse click. First I get the window position here with another extra tool command position the, the mouse at uh, 50 50 x 50 y 50 over the window position which is somewhere here send a click and then I send f5 and then I send this mouse, mouse move restore which will move the mouse cursor back to wherever it was uh, before I executed this command and then I can use all, all those cvim features and stuff uh, as expected. So, so let's see here. And I, I actually think you can see the mouse cursor moving. If you look really closely, it, it should move super quickly here and then move it back. I don't know if you can see it or not, but let, let's try this with my browser executing script here and see what happens. I don't know if you saw the mouse cursor moving. I didn't see it because I have a plugin that, that hides the mouse cursor, but I discovered that it doesn't hide it when I record video, so whatever. And now I can press O, maybe. Yes, it brings this up. I can also uh, use quick marks GOG. So, and I have, of course, this browser script bound to a key binding, so super F, so I never have to touch uh, the mouse at all and I can instantly start typing commands and this is uh, how you can use x2 tool to send I, I send this fake clicks and and uh, and the uh, key keys to this window but this is extremely dirty to, to do things this way and you should try not to rely on them but the thing is you know i i, I don't know what's causing these uh, issues is it this start page which I just downloaded from someone on GitHub. It's written in CoffeeScript, which is some weird JavaScript thing. And uh, I also have the, my own strange uh, uh, modifications to the UI of Vivaldi. And I have this CVIM. Why this is not working properly is probably a combination of all of these things. So it's just a big pile of dirt tax and you cannot ask me to, to just fix everything in, in all, all of these things. And it's not really that important. And this gets the job done, you know. Sometimes this is the solution. Another, uh, and, and later now in, in the video series about Thunar, we will use this to send, to change layout. We will uh, uh, send control one to switch to icon view and control two to switch to, to list view. And we will use something similar like this here. But another use case could be, for instance, if you know, you open Thunar, you can send some fake extra tool here. You know that the menu is at the top left here and you can send a click and then you can navigate the menu, send some down arrows or whatever and left and right arrows and, and select commands in a menu and things like that. You can use extra tool for things like that. And sometimes you don't have an API or something for, for a program, so you need to use these uh, dirt dirt tax. And it can actually, uh, of course, don't use this at your job, but maybe you are restricted somehow. You cannot uh, uh, configure any settings in a program. For instance, you want a, a key a key combination for, for a command here. And you cannot, you, you, you're not allowed at your workplace or whatever it is to, to set your, your own key bindings in a program. Or maybe a, a web page, you, you just know that you want to click the button, you know the X, Y position of it. You can kind of add your own DIRTAC key bindings that will work in, in different programs. But, but I have said it now so many times, but this is dirty, don't rely on this. Don't build a software on this, but sometimes it is the fastest uh, solution to an issue that you probably have created yourself. <laughs> so then you're allowed to use it. And we will use it here to change layout, as I said, when we update directories and stuff. We'll get back, back to that in the Thunar series. I am Dr. Dirtak. Have a great day, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.